making a game in a month should be easy, right? It all started back in January with this year's Boss Rush Game Jam, which I decided to join. Not at the start though, I only joined after 5 days had already gone by. Another game dev, Emis, was also participating in this jam. And since he had stolen the idea of making a Souls-like game, I decided to make a top-down shooter. With with the gameplay mechanics of a Souls like it's it's an original game I promise 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 promise. The first four days were probably the most productive days in the whole jam, or well, the only thing I did on day one was modeling the character. I did more work on the game the following three days though, like stealing the cartoony shell shader I used for my other game, Terrified, but I changed the slight bit to fit this game more with the use of a hatched texture which gives it this nice look. But now that the art style was in place, we still had no real gameplay, so I quickly covered a player character, but it wasn't that good. We always couldn't just have the player walking around though, this is no walking simulator after all. So I turned my original thinking brain on and added the most original thing I could ever think of. I, I, I added rolling. We also got combat though. I later on also added the ability for combo attacks, so it wouldn't just do the same attacks over and over again. The game was also lagging a bit in the UI department, so I added a health bar, stamina bar and some equipment slots. Even though I would actually never use these equipment slots. But that's nothing to worry about, because right now we only have these dummies we can attack. And I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm winning the boss rush game jam with these enemies. So, how about I sit day in and day out, developing the most intelligent AI the Earth has ever seen- I just copied over the AI from my other game. Works like a charm though, but I don't think we can use these dummy models for the enemies. So, how about we do something completely different? Let's model a random wizard guy. If you don't know, there's always this upgrade girl or man sitting down in the Souls games. And I wanted to add that to this game too, for some reason. That is also why I modeled these things. They were supposed to be checkpoints for the levels that would lead up to the bosses, but I never actually made any levels like that, so they have no purpose. The, the wizard man does get a purpose later on though, but let's just put him aside for a while. Theme. The thing I forgot to tell you guys about, the theme for the jam is exchange. Instead of exploring the vast universe of creativity this theme opened up for me, I opted for a simple mechanic. When a boss dies, they drop an eye of wisdom, uh, which sends the player into a void where you can choose between getting a new weapon or more strength at the expense of health. After figuring out what the theme was going to add to the game, I added the healing mechanic and iframes for the rolling, which uh, I just took the amount of iframes straight from Dark Souls 1, but it doesn't really match up in Unity, so you only have like one fifth of a second of iframes. But don't mind that, because this was on Sunday, and I had a whole week worth of work ahead of me. Just take a look. Uh, uh wait one. Let me, let me check my notes. N no, yeah, nothing. I got nothing done the whole week because I forgot I had an exam that week. So that's around nine days of development down the drain. Getting back after a week, I could see that I did not have as much time left as I had hoped for. And I realized that this would probably be a good time to start working on the bosses. So I am proud to present the lava boss guy. I don't know, he never got a name. There was also going to be these minions he could spawn, but I ended up removing them. Why? Well, by adding a new mechanic, I kinda broke them. That mechanic was parrying, which was actually surprisingly easy to add to the game. 
It doesn't function like your typical Souls like though. It's more like Ultra Kill, where instead of timing it to parry, you just hit the parry button at the exact moment you get attacked and parry. So now that I had one boss and okay gameplay, I could continue on to the next boss, right? No. I felt like there was something missing and I just didn't feel like making the second boss just yet. So I made a menu totally not inspired by a certain game. I also decided to call the game Wisdom's Gaze because of those eye thingies. Oh yeah, right. I completely forgot about those. That that was what was missing. Right now when you press play, you would get sent directly into the boss arena with the boss, which looking at it now is fine. Maybe it could use a bit of an intro cutscene, but otherwise it's not the end of the world. Well, guess what? Oh, you just added a cutscene, right? No. I spent way too much time making these pictures and lore. Why? I don't know. Was it a good decision? No, it wasn't. But now we have some pictures I can use for the game. That also means that we can now bring back the random wizard guy I modeled before as the complete stranger that tells you, Oh, you're the chosen one, my boy. Now go, go out and save the world. And with that completely unnecessary lore in place, it was finally time to add the second boss, the Ice King, man. And now I had both my bosses, so the game was practically complete. That also means I can spend last week fine-tuning the game and its mechanics. <laughs> you actually thought I was going to make a good game. N no. If you don't know, the official Valheim Discord server was hacked in late January, and I was caught in the crossfire. By which I mean I willingly downloaded a beta test for the new Valheim update. To no one's surprise, it was a virus and my PC had to be factory reset 5 days from the finish line of the jam. And guess what? It gets worse. After getting all my stuff together and making a few tweaks here and there on Friday, like 4 days before the finish line, I had accidentally deleted the scene with the first boss. Yeah. And it was late, so I didn't even notice until the next day. And so, we smoothly transitioned into the crunch period of the jam. After discovering the disappearance of the first boss, I spent some time rebuilding him. Lucky for me, all the animations, models and so on was still in the project, so it was not like I had to rebuild it from the bottom. After that was done, I remembered the fact that I had not made a weapon for the ice boss yet. That seems pretty easy to add. Just take the default sword, switch out the model, adjust some settings and you got yourself a new weapon. Yeah, you are completely correct. So, that, that's what you did, right? Right? I I may or may not have spent a bit too long making a new attack pattern and animations for just this one weapon that most players probably won't even see or use. That's it, I, I can't do this anymore, I quit. <laughs> After adding the new weapon to the game, I realized a pretty big problem with the game. See, when you kill the first boss, you can either upgrade your character or steal the boss's weapon. Then you can use what you chose against the next boss, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you kill the second boss, and you choose to either upgrade or take the weapon, what the hell are you gonna use that for? There's no boss afterwards. You know, remember the wizard guy that tells you that you need to save the world and stuff? Well, surprise surprise, he is evil, and is the last boss. Now, you might think, hmm, if the first boss is a lava boss, the second is an ice boss, what could the last one be? You know, I am glad you asked. In the game, once you collect the power of the two bosses, the wizard will just switch sides. Hmm. I wonder what I get for being the good guy. Hmm. After he becomes evil, he takes the power of the two last bosses, which is also why he doesn't have any unique attacks. Only a mix of the attacks from the last two bosses. From here on out, I added the end cutscene after killing the Wizard Man and added some other finishing touches and the game was done. I got home on Monday at 3 o'clock, just getting ready to lay in bed and do nothing. 
until I remembered that I still had to submit the game. Long story short, I totally forgot to capture any screenshots or make anything in general for the itch.io page. So everything was made in the last minutes. I finally finished making the itch.io page and submitted the game with 5 minutes left on the timer. But hey, you know, let's look at some reviews, shall we? Yeah, the game ended up turning out pretty mediocre, in terms of gameplay at least. Moral of the story, don't join game jams you don't have time for, I guess. But you never know, since this video is coming out after the winners are published, maybe there's a chance I actually win. There was one game that blew us away like no other, blowing the competition away and fighting tooth and nail for first place, winning a towering $750! The game that stole our hearts and maybe a little bit of our blood along the way was... Okay, first place. Come on.